I was originally only going to purchase one blush and one lip balm, but because of your feedback, I ordered both blushes and a couple of the lip balms. But those are the five items and the only five wardrobe items I plan on purchasing this year. In here, I bought something that is Chanel. Good morning from the first vlog of 2024. These frames I wanted to talk about because you can't miss them. They are very large and if they look familiar, they are the same frame as the Celine sunglasses that I have loved so much. I was able to find them online to get a prescription done, but now I want to get a prescription version sunglass for one of these. So that'll be like my third frame. That's how much I love these. They're probably the most oversized frames that I have, but I really love them. So today what we're going to do is do a quick makeup look because we were on vacation for two and a half weeks. We just got back. I didn't vlog. I brought my camera, but I didn't really vlog. I took some video on my phone, which is really actually quite good for especially close-ups. Got PR here to unbox and I have my Chanel makeup order on the way and we will unbox that and take a close look as soon as that arrives. But I thought we would do the quick makeup look that I did on vacation. It was really quick. We were in Florida so I had SPF on every day and didn't really want to spend a lot of time getting ready. I have my essentials here. I um, actually put a couple of items I need to try out in there as well. So this is like my daily makeup now. Okay, so I have no makeup on right now. I have SPF. I'll try and list below the container that I brought or containers I brought to decant. I don't bring the full size with me, except I did bring, actually, just kidding. I brought these two full size items with me, but this was really quick and I had everything that I needed. So we're gonna start with the Total Eye by Color Science. I ordered this on the sale. I don't think I even talked about the Color Science sale. It just arrived on time for our trip and so I just packed everything away. Oh yeah, I found a nice SPF blush color that's I think newer to them. Medium shade here under the eye, SPF 35. We flew to the Midwest to visit family first. That happened all before Christmas. I'm gonna take Hermes in number 50 and a little bit of the color science. You know, this is a bit too light for me, but I like how it provides some really substantial coverage. So actually these two together are kind of a nice combination. The olive tone in the Hermes and then the color science SPF. Visited some of the farmland and actually it was quite nice weather-wise. We moved on to see more family including the sweetest little grandbabies. So there are three now. We spent most of our time before Christmas in the Midwest. And then on Christmas Eve, we flew. And then we got a nice little note from the airline while we were on the plane. And then we arrived in Florida. And I think most of what we actually did, okay, this is gonna even out in a little bit. I know it looks really light. I'm gonna take a little more of the Hermes just on the exterior here. A majority of our stay in Florida was eating. So I'll put a little montage of all the food that we had. really good fresh tried to 
stay on the healthy side. If I could find chia pudding or Greek yogurt for breakfast, I would do that. And then we walked a lot. I think we walked an average of like 14,000 steps. And then we worked out as well. And I think one of our record days was about 20,000. So we were very active. It was chilly there though, but I think most of it focused around food. Definitely looking a little bit light, but you're gonna see how this comes together, because it always does. I take a little bit more of the even up and I kind of build up here the front where I have my dark spots. And one of my gifts that my husband got me was tickets to the Nutcracker. And for those of you wondering about this, I think that it's probably more suited for more oily skin based on some of the comments that I got. So some of you with dry skin have tried it and noticed it wasn't hydrating enough. So let me know if that's your experience, but I'm more oily, so it works really well for that. And then we've got here, I brought the Gucci pencil because it's just the fastest brow. Gosh, I'm trying to think of other experiences that we had, but that was pretty much it. Yeah, this Gucci pencil has that more powdery effect so it's not shiny and it's really easy to travel with. So it's just this one pencil. I love my maximalist brow routine, but for minimalists, that's a really great one. Going in with the Jones Road, I need to order another one in light brunette. It's such a good brow gel. Going in with a little bit of trench. Oh yeah, I made a Victoria Beckham order as well and that arrived. So let me show you what I got there. So I know I need backups of certain things. So I just use this. On my eyes this is a contour and we're gonna do a little bit on the exterior as well but I just did this really fast putting a little highlighter right on the center of the eyelid and then we're gonna go in with a little bit more of the contour there's a very distinct line between my forehead and the rest of my skin I am thinking about a question someone asked about coverage for dark spots because the clay de is a bit dry and I agree that's actually why it works so well for me in the front here is because it is on that drier side clay bow honey I've been thinking about recommendations for a creamier more hydrating concealer for the front because I have more oily skin it just kind of breaks through after a while and then meshes well with the skin but it is more opaque it's a bit more intense this is the concealer under eye concealer I traveled with. It's by House Labs. This is the one that I said approximates the Chanel eye concealer and it's just really easy to travel with. And I have mine in 22 light medium. Also the tone works really well for this under eye area for me. Okay, I know I said this was super fast, but when I'm not talking, it's really fast. Newer shade, it's called Pink Sky. By Color Science, it's SPF 50, which is why I love this. So this is not as dry for me and it works well with the clay de peau. So if clay de peau concealer is a little bit dry, I wonder if a more emollient cream blush might help add a bit of that moisture back while still being able to maintain that opacity of concealer. This is a cheek and lip color, but it's still a little bit light for my lips, but I definitely went in with this like a lot of this for the day because it is SPF 50 as well. So this is a bit creamy for me. So it works well with all of the other items I have here because they are not as creamy. Okay, I'm gonna add a bit of mascara. Fosia Longest Lash. Okay, I've clearly gone overboard with blush. Again, let me just take care of that in a minute here. But I wanted to mention I traveled with this zip device because I've been going back and forth between the new face device and this one, and this one is really compact and lightweight. So this is the one I traveled with, worked out quite well. Let's put on this Victoria Beckham in Spark. I was gonna buy this as a backup, but they ran out of stock between this and the contour and marble before their uh, price increase. I tried to pick up these items on sale. They didn't have them. So let me go ahead and do the air wrap because that's what I took with me. I did take my Dyson air wrap. That is how much I love it. I only take a carry on and a personal item and I make room for the Dyson air wrap because it really is very quite shiny when I use that on my hair. In fact, I had a picture, actually I was holding one of the grandbabies I'll show you here. That was with a really, really quick styling with the Dyson, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and then let's go ahead and unbox. 
just used this really quickly on my hair and I'm probably due for my roots to get done here but I also went in with a little bit more of the Victoria Beckham contour right up here on my forehead because it's very stark difference between um, the SPF and my skin tone. I also contoured down the sides of my nose just a little. I did bring powder, of course, Perfect Blur powder and the Buff and Blur brush, but let's leave this for now and see how it goes while we unbox here. You know how much I love Chantecaille and they sent me a few things here and I will be featuring a lot of their skincare in my skincare favorites of the year because I know so many of you have questions about my skincare. It's not that different from last year's skincare. Kind of love what I love. And that is one of the reasons why I know many of you come here. I know there's that term anti-influencing, which I feel like since the beginning of this channel has been what this has been about because I want to help narrow down the focus for you if you are looking at the sea of products and really find the best of the best. So that's why you see a lot of things over and over again. So I'll do the skincare routine and I'll show you items in action as well. But they sent over few of their lip shades which I love and this is one that I would have picked that's one of my favorite did I include it I really wanted to but I couldn't find it and I talked about it a few times and I thought let me just wait until I have it again so I can share it with you it's this one in the shade rock rose and this is such a beautiful shade in fact I'll put it on a little bit later uh, beautiful shade one of my very favorite lip shades and it's in the lip veil formula so it's a little bit more opaque than the lip chic but i also love the lip chic formula for every day and they sent over one of my very favorite shades in fact this one i did have it's in bourbon rose and it's a bit more glossy and a little bit more sheer than the lip veil right here actually let me take some photos as well this is bourbon rose and i will want to make sure i put them on instagram i'm so bad with instagram that's another reason i feel like i'm not when i say influencer i feel like i don't fit under that category i'm really not good about posting on instagram because i don't know i don't enjoy it as much i think also i feel like i don't really appeal to the masses like the things that i select are very niche very niche so those of you who are here also probably align really well with what I love. This one's a beautiful shade, another lip cheek that I haven't tried yet. It's in Calla Lily, which I'm excited to give it a try because it looks a little bit like, a little bit like Rock Rose, but in lip cheek formula. So we can try those against each other. So thank you so much Chantekai for sending these over. I would love to try all of their lip cheeks at some point. That would be amazing. Let me know what other lip chic shades you love. Also picked up some jeans. So you saw me post them because I've been waiting for this denim to go on sale for months because I love the cut of the pants that I have already. And so I picked up the denim on sale and now I think I need to. So let me show those to you. These I picked up in a size 28. And I love, here's the back pocket. I love the stitching here. It's very intentional. I think that's my word for 2024. I don't make resolutions, but I want all of my purchases to be intentional. Oh, and that brings me to this idea. I read an article about, um, it was a sustainability fashion editor, or fashion editor focusing on sustainability, picking only five items to purchase in a year. I really want to do that. I really want to just purchase five really amazing items this year because I have so many staples already. I don't really, I don't really need anything. So these are going to be five things that I'm going to purchase to elevate my wardrobe. Actually, this was on the list as one of those items, but I got this in 2023. So I'm going to say I'm going to just go with five other ones. So since I purchased this in 2023, it's not on my 2024 list. And I'll show them to you. I love the wash. There's a bit of stretch to them. I might have to, like I said, get another one. Does that count if I get two of the same thing as an additional item for the year? <laughs> Maybe. I'll show you how they look, but I'm just so happy with them. So happy with them. And this is one of my favorite designers. Got on the denim. And as you can see, it's got that cut where it goes out on the sides which I think is the flattering part of this cut. And this is a size 28. And then, oh, I have those Reformation, those little ballet core flats on. Again, I've rarely seen these with a promo code that applies to them. So I was really happy to pick these up for, I think it was 15% off. Let me talk to you about the five things that I have on this list because I had to write them down. And let me know if you think I should swap something out for one of these items or what you think about this list because there are several things 
that have been on here for a while, including, I know I already have a Chanel suit, which I love, but I'm looking for a Chanel jacket, a tweed jacket that's open in the front, collarless, a little bit longer, a little bit boxy or something I can put over sweaters because the one I have is pretty close cut. I can't really layer it that much. So something that will be a little more seasonal, less wool in it as well. It's very specific. I found one in the UK. So I'm looking at pre-owned, of course. And I actually went to go purchase it, but then the vat and everything got added on top. It was almost a thousand dollars more than the cost of the jacket. So I said, no, thank you. That was just excessive, but that is on my list. In fact, we're going to go to a consignment store today where I found my other denim jacket to see if they have any other Chanel pieces. So that is my one item I'm going to just keep my eye out. So I, I will look on Farfetch because I've pre-owned there. Let me know if you have a site that you'd like to go to for pre-owned Chanel vintage pieces because that's where I'm looking. So And it was a blue tone. The one that I was looking at, a blue tweed, I think would be really beautiful and really versatile. will go with any other shade combination. I think it goes well with black, with browns, with um, gray. I think blue goes with pretty much everything out of all the shades that are out there. I did see a red one, but it's not really me. And I don't, you could wear red with brown, couldn't you? And black and navy. So maybe red, I don't know. That's just not me though. So a Chanel tweed coat is one of five items I have on this list. Okay, for shoes, I have to figure out which shoe I want to buy. So I'm looking at the Laura Piana Summer Charms with the gold hardware. Now those are, either out of stock or pre-order for June, which is a long way down the road. So always looking at those, not sure. I'm also looking at the Chanel uh, slingbacks. Those are classics that I want to purchase. Although I have to say, I am very averse to logos right now. That is something I don't wanna see on any of my designer items, which sounds funny, or I want it to be really discreet. So I am not looking at anything that has a very visible logo on it. So that's kind of where I'm focused. Laura Piana Cashmere. I do want to pick up one of their cashmere sweaters this year. I was reading a little bit about how sustainable, at least how they, their narrative on sustainability sounds like they're very responsible with how they curate their cashmere, which is one of the reasons I'd like to pick one product up by Laura Piana. And then, oh, well, let's see, one, two, three, that's four. Um, and then a Laura Piana bag. So I noticed there was a one new design, although it looks kind of large, but I'm interested in it by Laura Piana. Always looking at the bail bag, some kind of bag by Laura Piana. So out of all the luxury brands out there of things that I've had experience with, Laura Piana seems to have one of the finest quality items from their leather to their clothing. And they have very discreet logo, if anything, on their products, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, so that leaves four. There are some things I always am going to have my eye on. The Kelly bag. I actually had a chance to look at the Kelly bag on our trip. There was a consignment store that had one in gold with gold hardware, never used. And it was the Return though, not the Cellier. I like the Cellier because I feel like that bag for me is very tailored. I'm wanting that look with the overall bag. I think this was a 32 or in the 30s. It was a little bit bigger, but because I'm taller, it actually worked quite well. But the price point was still too high for me. I can't see spending this $19,000 on the bag. It was a lot. So passed on that one, but I always have my eye out for one. And we're traveling to Asia. Plan is to travel to Asia later this year, which will be a really fun trip, but we are still coordinating that. So that might be something I'll look for there. Always the Cartier Pantera is going to be on my list. Those are a couple other items. So those are going to be my five. Chanel jacket, Laura Piana bag, Laura Piana cashmere sweater, shoes. Either the Laura Piana, you can see Laura Piana, how much I love them, or Slingbacks by Chanel. And that leaves a wild card for number five because it was going to be the denim, but I picked up the denim. So let me know if you can think of something I'm missing here. But those are the five items and the only five wardrobe items I plan on purchasing this year. Plans can change, but right now that's what I'm thinking. Let's keep opening things that I did order from Sephora. I ordered this from Sephora because I had the, whatever the points are to save $10. Now so let me try a blush that many of you loved and I actually have tried one or two, was it one? I can't remember how many, at least one blush. Thought, let me try another one. And I think this one was not available at the time. Or maybe it was, I really can't recall. So this shade looked like, is this something I have? 
I don't think I have this. It looks really pretty, but now I'm looking at it, it's quite vibrant. So oh, we'll try this out, but this is the Gucci blush in three. Why do I feel like I have a blush like this? I probably have a blush like this already, but we'll play with it. It looks beautiful, but it is reminding me of something I already have. I don't know if it's by Gucci or not. We'll be trying this out. Yeah, I purchased this. This is a Victoria Beckham order that I made. I would have ordered more if they had these items in stock, which they don't. Victoria Beckham, send it in the bag. So the Baby Blade, which was in my brow product favorites of the year, is in dark brown. And then we have the eye stick in trench, which you know I love to place right under here. And that's such a staple that that is also going to live in my get ready with me area for filming since we are here. So they sent it over this, which I really am interested in. It's by Anna Blue and it's a scalp cleanser. This is made in Korea. It says use once a week, alternating with your regular shampoos. And it looks like this. Then we have this Anna Blue hair serum. It's an interesting um, texture. It's kind of like a matte texture here. One to two pumps of serum to the palms of your hands, rub together to distribute evenly and apply. Looks like this. So it's like a more watery texture. Oh, it smells nice. It's like a more citrusy scent. I don't know if that's what they're going for, but that's what I'm picking up. Yeah, I like that because it's lightweight. It's not going to weigh my hair down from what I can tell. So thank you so much to Anna Blue for sending these over. This one is by One Skin, the power to reverse skin aging. Oh, delivered by Longevity Science. So if you are a data person, there are lots of charts and graphs. I'll look at these a little bit closer. This is a refill for their facial cleanser. This is the bottle. I like when the bottles are clear, that way you can see how much is actually left in a product before you need to replace it. And then this is, oh, this is their eye supplement, OS01. The only peptides scientifically proven to reverse skin aging at the molecular level. So within two to four weeks of consistent use, you will start to notice minimized puffiness improve firmness and softer looking crow's feet in the lines. This peptide that they mentioned, it said continues to fortify your skin barrier. You will notice an overall improvement in your skin's health, which typically presents a stronger, more hydrogen, even toned skin. Feels nice, it feels lightweight. Thank you so much to One Skin for sending over the cleanser and this eye supplement. By the way, the Dior collection that I posted about, people did not seem interested in that. So I'm holding off ordering that until I hear if you're interested or not. Oh, nice. Cercel. So I really liked their brightening cream. I ran out of it. I, it's an empty. Did I talk about that at some point? I think I did. I really liked it. I would purchase it if I didn't have another brightening product right now, but they also have vitamin C ampules, slow release vitamin E, biopeptides, and antioxidants. So I've been happy with the Cercel products that I've tried so far. Oh, okay. So it comes like this. And uh, if you know about vitamin C, sometimes it's difficult to stabilize it. And so it's kind of nice that these are little ampules. Breakthrough in clean biotechnology optimizes this antioxidant pack treatment with a cutting edge vitamin C delivery system. Sustainable, stable, and superior. Our encapsulated vitamin C blend delivers immediate and sustained protection with its time controlled release of actives. Vitamin E accelerates the performance of other nutrients while biopeptides supercharge the collagen producing abilities of vitamin C. The synergistic effect of a single ampule delivers noticeable brightening and firming benefits. Oh, oh yeah. So I just realized I need to do my nails as well because I pushed back the cuticles. I'm going to use my Hermes polish here. 10% stabilized vitamin C. Thank you so much to Cercel for sending these over. I'm going to give them a good try. So the goal of any new skincare to me, whether it's P or I purchase it, is to really put up against those holy grails to see how they compare and if they will replace them or not. And even if I don't select something as a holy grail, it doesn't mean it's not good. I do try out so many really lovely skincare items and maybe there'll be things that I can recommend to you as alternatives because I know some of the skincare I use is probably some of the most expensive, not the most expensive, but some of the most expensive skincare out there. So I also wanna find alternatives for you that are going to work really well. Oh, it smells so good. It says the wrinkle cream of hair care. That's quite the slogan. A-R-E-Y. First thing that caught my eye is this comb. It's really cute. It's a black and white comb. Oh, look how nice. That's a nice comb. I like that. So thank you so much for sending these over. Let's see what we have. We have a scrub. This is a clarifying scalp exfoliant that delivers antioxidants and pigment preserving peptides for all hair types. So one thing that caught my eye is that it has this 
a dispenser so you can really get into the scalp. I think that's really wise. Um, it utilizes exfoliants to remove dead skin cells and, ex and excess buildup on the scalp while preparing the skin to best absorb a combination of antioxidants and a clinically effective peptide. Oh my gosh, I'm so hungry to stimulate cell regeneration one to two times a week or whenever your scalp is in need of a detox. Then we also have here Wash, a gentle cleansing shampoo for stimulating and preserving pigment. Oh, that's what this is about. Okay, now I remember. It's the first functional beauty brand to target aging hair with a proactive science-driven approach towards slowing and repigmenting, repigmenting gray hair. I often get questions about my hair and my highlights. These are not highlights. These are gray or uh, white hairs. So when I get my hair colored, it just takes the color differently than the rest of my hair. So you can see how much white hair I would actually have. That's where the highlights highlights are. It's because that white hair is absorbing the color differently than the dark strands of hair. So you can see if I didn't color my hair, I would have uh, mostly white hair, which is not a bad thing. I just don't think my coloring can pull off white hair. I think it's beautiful on some people. Some people look really amazing with it. I don't think I would. So I do continue to color my hair and this is interesting. So this is a gentle cleansing shampoo for stimulating and preserving pigment. So we're going to try and see, I mean, I still color my hair, so it's going to be a little harder to see, but I'll be able to tell in the growth of my hair if it's having an effect or not. This is leave-in mist, a lightweight leave-in conditioner that smooths and detangles while protecting it against UV rays. So thank you so much for sending these over. I'm going to try these. I'm really interested in this whole idea. I've never tried anything that targets, well actually it doesn't sound like there's much on the market that does this. I'll let you know how that goes. Let's put the glasses on with hair just so you can see how they look in case you are interested in them. That's how it looks with a complete look. So it doesn't well, no, they still look big, but they don't look as big with my hair down, I don't think. I'm going to take pictures of the Chantecai products and then maybe we can try them on. We're going to unbox when that Chanel product comes in and let me see if I can take pictures of the lipsticks now and then I can show them to you on. Okay, I just took pictures of these. Um, I swatched them, but now I realize you probably want to see the swatches. So let me just swatch them as I go. So let's go in with Bourbon Rose first because... I'll give you a reference point and I'll swatch it here. So this is Bourbon Rose. So you can see how sheer it is, but it's really pretty on. This is a great everyday lip. Happy to have a new one here because it's such a pretty shade. If you're looking for just a pretty everyday lip, Bourbon Rose is beautiful, nice and hydrating. Yeah, it goes with most looks as well. And then we've got here Calla Lily. So this is a new to me shade. I just swatched it, it's so pretty. It's like a berry tone right there. Ooh, that's a lovely berry tone. Okay, I think so many of you have mentioned this one as well as one that you love. I can see that. I think it's been out of stock. It's one of the reasons why I haven't had a chance to try it because I think every time I've looked for it, it wasn't available. So if you're looking for like a more berry tone, a little bit more intense than Bourbon Rose, a little bit cooler, really beautiful. Okay, we're gonna try on this next one. So the next one is a lip veil. So the first two were lip cheeks. This is a lip veil. Ooh, you can see the intensity there. This is one of the most beautiful lip shades and formulas that I've tried. So this one has withstood the test of time because I've talked about this one for years. I just couldn't find it when I was talking about lip shades. Okay, yeah, there you go. Really pretty. I'm gonna actually eat something and then we're gonna run some errands and I'm to you the other day I think yesterday or the day before and told you we were going consignment shopping I can't remember if I had four or five on my five things I was gonna buy this year well I bought something and it wasn't planned but it goes along with the idea of the Chanel jacket so I was on the hunt for a Chanel jacket I decided I wanted a tweed I wanted it to be a bit boxier cut so I could put other things under it 
And the sizing is tricky because I have broad shoulders here. I'm more of an athletic build. And the denim jacket, which I have, is a really nice size. It's a 42 in Chanel. The other suit I have is a 40, so I was looking for something in a 42. But back to the buy. In here, I bought something that is Chanel. This looks virtually unworn, and I was trying to figure out what year it's from. I think it might be from 98, but I'm not sure. Like there is virtually no wear on this and it's not blue. It is pink though, and I could not pass this up. So I picked it up. It's a Chanel suit and it's a double breasted, which is not actually what I was looking for. I was looking for single breasted and collarless on the tweed jacket. But this, like I said, I tried it on, it just fit perfectly. The lining is beautiful. Usually in this arm area is where I'll see wear, even online when I'm looking. And there's virtually no wear to this. So I'll try it on for you. It looked really cute with it jeans. And you can see it's very discreet button there in silver. This is the skirt. And as you can see, it's got the button. Um, it's actually not attached. It just has a little translucent snap here holding it in place right now. So I can place this where I need it and the skirt looks like this. And I'll show you the entire suit as well as just the jacket on with the denim, which is how I wanted to use this. I wanted to be able to again, put it over something that wasn't just a camisole, something a little bit more substantial. So I was so happy I found this yesterday and it was one of those buys that yes, it wasn't planned. In fact, it did not fall under I think I had a wild card, didn't I? Uh, it didn't fall under one of those things that I said, which was a Chanel tweed jacket, Laura Piana bag, Laura Piana cashmere sweater, some kind of shoe. And then I feel like I had a fifth one that wasn't filled in, right? I have to go back and look. But this is gonna be that item. So I was telling the person working there, I have a five item restriction this year. I can only buy five items. And she said, well, this suit is just, one. That's going to count as one thing, this entire suit. So I'm going to show you that on. This is most likely how I will wear this jacket just with denim. Any denim really. In fact, let me see if I can get my uh, 501s if you are in the market for something that's not as luxury, but I think it's a really great denim. I can put those on as well. I'll probably wear it open like this, but I was looking for a single breasted, no collar, round, and then this length also. Nothing cropped because I can show you my other Chanel jacket that I have that's a size 40. And so I think this is probably a 42 just because it's a really nice, a little bit roomier fit for me. This is the size 40 if you haven't seen it on me because this is just enough. Like if I went a size smaller, it wouldn't fit. You can see my denim over there, sorry about that. But these are 501s, 3332s, the Levi's. So I definitely took these for my husband, but they are also a good staple denim. Okay, let's try the skirt on with this. Again, I probably would wear it unbuttoned like this. I'll show you what it looks like buttoned, which I think is not as flattering. So here it is all buttoned up, which is why I think, <laughs> I think it's definitely more flattering opened versus all the way closed, but it does show you how much room there is in here. Let's go ahead and unbutton again. I thought this might be an interesting way to style this with my Laura Piana sandals from the summer and then the bag. Well, yeah, let me know if you have any ideas around a shoe for this suit. I'd love to know. So I'm starting to think out of all the shoes, the Chanel slingbacks would be the best solution because I already have so many loafers and flat shoes and my totally beat up Gucci loafers, which I love. Maybe I can wait another year for the Laura Piana summer charms, I think. Plus they're so hard to get a hold of. So I need something to wear with my Chanel suits shoe wise, because it's really hard for me to think of a neutral shoe that will work. That might be on my list. Maybe I'll try and get those in Asia when we go. And then that Chanel order is coming in. We got here my Chanel order that just arrived. I do like to order it with a fabric so that I can reuse this. So we've got a blush. We have an eyeshadow palette. We've got another blush and we have a rouge cocoa balm and a rouge cocoa balm. Then we got a couple of samples, this eye cream and this number one de Chanel serum. 
I was originally only going to purchase one blush and one lip balm, but because of your feedback, I ordered both blushes and a couple of the lip balms. Let's take a look at this first. This is the palette. It comes in the velvet pouch. And then this looks like the other LeBeige palettes in terms of packaging. Interesting, has a bit more shimmer than I thought I would see. It's really hard to tell online, but of course I will swatch this for you. Got one of the blushes and this one's in the coral shade. So this is the one that I actually was not going to pick up. I wasn't planning on picking up the coral, but because you wanted to see it and I think it works well with the palette. We've got a brush here. It's a bit of glow to that as well. Yeah, I see a bit of shimmer in there as well. It's really beautiful. So let's see that next to the palette. I think because there are the purpley tones in the palette, that's why this coral will work with it. Let me keep those in the frame there. That way you can see them. Then we have this one, which is the rose shade in the blush. And this is the one I was originally going to pick up because I feel like these work really well together. So you can see side by side how it looks next to the other blush. We've got one of the Rouge Coco Bombs here. This one is in 938 Keep Cool. So the Rouge Coco Bombs, if you're not familiar, come with this white packaging and the gold accent. Oh, wow. This does not look like how I thought it would look. It's very like frosty mocha toned, which is going to be way too light for me, but I am thinking I will probably put this on top of another lip shade. Oh wow, this is not what I was expecting. Hmm. And I also picked up 940 Cocoon. Okay, that looks more like what I had in mind. I can't remember what I thought I was going to see with 938 Keep Cool, but that's not how I recall. But this one is beautiful. It has a bit of a sheen to it. Actually, they both do have a bit of a sheen to them. So that actually looks more pink than purple to me. But without this shade, it looks quite pink or peach. So we'll see how that goes. This one is quite sparkly though, compared to the others. That blush is quite pretty. It's got a bit of a sheen to it, a bit of a warm sheen to it. A little bit softer than I thought it would be as well. It looked a bit more intense in the pan. The pink blush feels a bit creamier than the coral blush and it doesn't have the same level of glow to it. It's a little bit more refined. Really curious how this compares to Rose Ecrine. So let me know what other shades you'd like me to swatch this against when I do the Get Ready With Me. Wow, the lip is a barely there lip, but it actually looks like it's going to be quite pretty. It has a lovely rose tone to it that I think might flatter my skin. We'll see how that goes. And then 940, that lip looks really pretty. It reminds me of a watermelon type shade, something that I've seen before. I can't recall what I had this in, but I have had a similar shade. I'll have to see what this reminds me of. So the next video coming up will be this video where I will feature both blushes, the eyeshadow palette, and the lip products. Make sure to come back. I think it's gonna be the next video in line where I'm going to do the try on of all the lovely Chanel products. But that is it for today's video. So please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Ba 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 ba